So Andy, do you play FIFA often? Yeah, I play it regularly in my spare time when I'm not training or working. Um, Playing real football? Yeah. <laughs> play <laughs> Ultimate Team a lot. So I do, I like it. Yeah. So, like picking a dream team and playing with it. Yeah, so obviously your footballing experience and knowledge goes beyond FIFA. We actually played together at under, under 10 or under 11 level, but you've gone on to play for lock and stuff now. So how do you feel your season went this year? Well, it's not over yet, but how do you feel your yeah. season's gone to date? Well, so far, well, we set ourselves goals at the start of the season to make the top six, but unfortunately it didn't happen. We missed out on a bad point, mm -hmm. but now we've set goals again, obviously not reaching the top six, we've set our goals just to finish in the seventh, because that's the highest place we can finish, and right yeah. now we're currently doing that. That's good. Yeah, we beat Ballyclare last week, they go three points ahead of him in seventh, so obviously we'll just hopefully finish seventh and then rebuild in the summer again. And can you put your finger on why you didn't finish in the top six? Is there certain matches you feel you should have won that you didn't? Um, I, yeah, it was just our consistency levels over the season, dropping points at, at later on against teams and not holding on to wins and we end up drawing games and that we could have won and stuff. So maybe it was more of a, a mental side of things we need to work on maybe. Yeah. Because we can't, we need to work on our game management because we couldn't see out games and stuff yeah. and hold on to the one games where we were winning. Yeah. Just a uh a bit of a preview for the for the audience we the TV in the office won't work at the, at the moment for some reason and we're playing this game <laughs> on the smallest screen possible so uh, that's our excuse in for bad FIFA, <laughs> FIFA gameplay early just in case Andy absolutely wipes the floor with me here I don't think that's going to happen I can barely see it <laughs> <laughs> but you never know it's bad yeah so we mentioned there we started off together at a, a young level obviously you've gone on to to do more than I've been able to do with my football accomplishments being limited to FIFA. So uh, just talk a bit about how you got into football and why you thought you'd go along and start playing football. Yeah, well, I got into football because playing at a primary school just, and I wasn't playing at a competitive level and I was doing really well compared to the other guys at school and obviously they played for a club team so I went up to see what the crack was and Ever since that, I haven't looked back. Yeah, <laughs> it was the best decision I've ever made in my life. Yeah. and obviously I'm still playing, and the ones who were playing for a team back then aren't. So yeah, and you moved, you excelled at Armagh City at a, at a young age, but you felt you moved, you moved to, you had to make the move to Glenavon. How did that go for you? Was it a daunting experience being what twelve or thirteen moving to a, an Irish Premiership side? Um, yeah, it was obviously. Uh, Played a couple of seasons in Barman, I found it a bit, it was a bit too easy for me. Weren't being tested? Yeah, that was it and I wanted to test myself because I was that sort of person. <laughs> I wanted to challenge myself yeah. and um, obviously moving to Glenavon, I could do that playing against some of the top Irish league sides like Glenfield and Glentorn and obviously it was a lot tougher but obviously from playing with Glenavon over the years I managed to get myself into the Northern Ireland setup and stuff by playing well Yeah. against those sort of teams. And obviously, sorry, I'm concentrating FIFA yeah, here. No, <laughs> it's that, hard to talk and yeah, concentrate at the same time. Um, so yeah, and then I obviously went on to represent Northern Ireland at youth level for four years. Yeah, which was a great experience. Yeah, was it like playing Sky Sports and that sort of thing? Yeah, I represent Northern Ireland under 16s in the Victory Shield on Sky Sports. Um, it was. Absolutely surreal being 15 years old still Score, at school. Scoring on Sky Sports? Yeah, scored v Wales and the equalise in the Victory Shield. And it was just unbelievable. Like, I was at school two, the day before, and then yeah. there were, my school friends were all watching me on Sky Sports, <laughs> and it, even to be playing was surreal, and then the score was even better. Yeah, and looking back on that team, it's some team considering. Ben Kennedy's went to Stephen Edge, Jordan Thompson's been to Man U, Rangers, Mark Sykes just signed over in Oxford too. Is it cool seeing where your ex teammates have went on to? Yeah, it's absolutely brilliant. Guys like Mark Sykes who I played with in Fort Glenavon and uh, Northern Ireland under 18s and you could see in every day at train or every night at train that Mark was just 
like had it all and like Jordan back in the day he was at Man United and you could see that they were miles above everyone yeah. so you could and like they were going to go on and do great things like but um, it's great to see them doing so well now and great to see some of them in the Northern Ireland senior setup yeah. have them come through the youth system so it's great to see yeah uh, and Hopefully you, Mark Sykes the next one to come through the yeah. senior setup. You had, a, you had a lot of trials whenever you were younger too? Yeah, uh, yeah. I, went, I was overseas at um, Aston Villa, um, Bolton Wanderers, um, Sheffield Wednesday, yeah. Celtic and Rangers in fact. Um, but obviously I uh, didn't get a contract from them but it was still a great experience to go over and play for them sort of clubs. You were playing against Man United, a team of support. It's a great experience. Yeah. So it was. And like when you're on them trials, you know it's you have to impress. You have one one or two days, maybe not even that, to to show that you should be given another chance at such a big club. So, it do you feel a lot of pressure as a young person going to them sort of clubs to try and prove yourself? Yeah, absolutely. It's very daunting. As going over for a week, week at a time usually to the clubs. And I was trained every day, and that's something that I wasn't used to over here because yeah over here it's semi-professional or amateur and you're only training twice a week but to get up and every, every Monday to Thursday say and do double sessions yeah it's very tough shock to the system yeah definitely and like you're competing against everybody in the world because they have the pick of the world like and yeah it's it's really it's really tough like but oh I absolutely loved it and obviously it's a great memory to have and great to tell the grandkids about it and stuff. Yeah. So it is. It's pretty cool. Is it hard though, like obviously you're only you're a young teenager there, is it hard being told that you weren't good enough for that level or you you haven't made it this time around but maybe try again next year, that sort of stuff? Is it hard hearing that? Because obviously you'd okay. excel so much. You'd excel so much over here. Yeah, it is, it is hard to take but you sort of think about it and feel how lucky you were even getting across the water yeah. because not many people get the opportunity to do so so I just took it took it as a came and I absolutely loved it and like I'll never forget the memories I had over there something I'll always have yeah even some of the teams talking about the senior games to watch which was a great experience as well I went to watch Austin Villa v Birmingham oh big derby and, uh, yeah it was in the Carling Cup I think and I'll have to give you a go there have I Oh, get there! <laughs> and I think I remember. I think maybe David Bentley or or someone like that. The legend David Bentley scored in the extra time to win it or something. Someone like that. Yeah. But I have fond memories of that. Is there a certain club that you trailed that that you enjoy more than others? Yeah, um, I enjoyed Bolton the most. Oh really? Yeah. How was that? Um, because Villa, I've been to Villa with uni and stuff, and you see their facilities is unbelievable yeah it's ridiculous like see the pitches they're like carpets mm -hmm. it's unbelievable like playing on that every day you, mm -hmm. you play on some of the pitches here over here and you're, it's like you're playing on a field <laughs> <laughs> playing of muck yeah so um, yeah I love Villa or Bolton sorry because when I was over there my manager was Gavin McCann okay yeah a legend of Bolton and he was really good with the young players and well respected I just enjoyed it yeah but Villa's, uh, Villa and Celtic and Rangers facilities were all better in Bolton's but I just didn't, I felt like Bolton yeah. was, I was treated better I bet. I can't tell about the ball or not most times <laughs> it's very hard to say it's yeah. a tight game this but <laughs> so when you when you realised that going over to England wasn't going to be a possibility did you just put your head down and focus on Glen Avon? Because that you're still at the club at that time? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I was only uh, 15 when I got told that I wasn't going to get signed by these clubs. And um, after that, I just wanted to, I was still in the Northern Ireland setup. I just said to myself, I'm going to get my head down and work hard and gotcha, to try to keep in the Northern Ireland system as long as possible. And see where it takes you? Yeah, absolutely. And Did um, you ever give up the, the dream? Like no, even at fifteen, because obviously you like. Did you have the attitude like I'll show them that they were wrong? Not yeah, to, absolutely. Not to pick yeah, I had that attitude, and still today I have that attitude. Like, because yeah, uh, I want to play in the Premier League. Obviously, I'm in the Championship at the minute. But yeah, I'm still trying to get it back into the Premier League, but hopefully, in the next 
year or two, hopefully I can get back in. And if not, then I'll be more than happy to stay on call and play there because I love it. Yeah. yeah. Do you have like a certain plan of action in mind that you think I need to do this, this, and this to? get to that Premier League level or is it just perform week in week out and see what that takes you? Yeah, my problem is consistency levels, like one week um, I might be brilliant but the next week I might be poor, so I just need to be you know, more consistent to do it on a regular, regular basis. Yeah, do you know why that So when you, when you left Glen Avon, you'd had, you played, you'd had some success there with the first team, you'd scored a couple of goals, what was the experience like breaking into that first team? Uh, yeah, it was a, it was obviously a great experience, and I was only seventeen when I made, made my debut for and I was playing in the middle. What's that experience like going from boy boy football to men football? Oh, it's massive. So it is. I was playing the, for the reserve team a lot, and I was playing against some of the players you hear week in week out in the Irish league. You see them on the BBC highlights and stuff, and yeah. obviously I gained the, gained the experience playing against them, and obviously. Gary Hamilton, the manager, uh, trusted him and believed in him and give him a, ended up giving him a league debut. As before that, I was just playing in the Middle Ulster Cup. Yeah. And uh, he gave him a league debut against Glenthorne at the Oval, and I ended up scoring on the on the debut, which was a great experience. Yeah, that's unreal. Obviously, something I'll never forget. Yeah. From time to time, again, I'm still going. Back. Still going on. I still go back and look at the highlights yeah. of the goal. I still can't believe it. Yeah. There's good cool photos as well. You yeah, got good, good photos of you yeah. scoring and running and celebrating. Yeah, a lot of good photos, especially even on Sky Sports that time, scoring against Wales, have pictures of it. And yeah. They're all Those are back class, on. Yeah. class memories to have, really. Yeah. Definitely, I have pictures of all their moments in my house, hanging up and yeah. stuff, with my own iron caps, which is youth caps, which is brilliant. Yeah. And, and when, when it came, came time to leave Navin, did you just think that? that you weren't getting the first team opportunities that you really wanted to have? Yeah, um, I decided to leave Glenavon because I was sitting on the bench most weeks. And yeah, a, a tough place to break into. Uh, yeah, I was playing for the reserves, but I sort of wanted to play senior senior football in a competitive league. And obviously with Armagh City just up the road from me, it was handy like. And yeah. I went into our Man City team and absolutely loved it and I done well and obviously Lacko our Man City I played our Man City a few years and then Lacko signed me. Yeah. Which was good. What was it like going back to to our Because there was a step down the level did you feel you needed that maybe just to get your get some first team football under your belt and then yeah, reevaluate at the end? Yeah, I felt like I needed first team football to um to just obviously get back into enjoying my football as I was sitting on the bench a lot for the Glenavon first team and I got that with Arma playing week in week out and yeah. I was scoring goals and enjoying it and I was back enjoying football again so obviously I have no regrets leaving Glenavon yeah as it's a, worked out yeah as it worked out yeah and obviously I'm still playing in the championship where I obviously went to from Glenavon but yeah. obviously Obviously, I want to get back up someday, but whether it happens, that's another story. But I'll yeah, keep trying, I'll never give up. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm running out of time here. I'm running out of time. <laughs> Three minutes left, I might park the bus, get in the corner. <laughs> Men of the go out in here has had the ball. Oh, we're in. Oh no, we're in. We're in. We're in. Wait. Bang. Oh! oh PK, was it? Great attack. Gareth, Gareth, Gareth. Oh, press X button. Oh, you're on. Press X button. Oh, no, no. So close. Ben, I'm hoofing it. No. Uh, go on, then. Unlucky, uh, Charlie. Uh, what the hell, the mate? Comes into my office. And beats me in my own office. Unreal. Easy peasy. Well, that one goes to him. We'll, we'll play another one now. So, time to try and get a bit of revenge here. Not to cough the Not to cough them, though. Not to cough them, though. Don't know why he wasn't great in that last game either. I just nicked it. I genuinely think it's because of the screen. Is that an excuse, or? Uh, probably. <laughs> so, we were talking about Armagh there. 
before we ended that last match. She went from there to that goal. Why did you feel that was the best move at that stage of your career? Well, it was I was scoring goals in Armagh and and creating goals, but the team were doing well and we were sort of like mid table, below mid table, and yeah, it was it was sort of close round relegation zone and come got it. That might be a good time finish. Yeah. What a finish! That might be might be a time finish. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. I s- so I'd say I'd say lock all came ringing me, locking me because uh, as they could see, I wasn't the team wasn't doing well at at our mile, and obviously I decided to go, and obviously I've loved my time there ever since. It's a great club. Yeah, do you feel your time there has been a success, and it's been a worthwhile move? Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I've um, uh, Dean Smith signed me, and ever since that, I've I've absolutely enjoyed my time there. And it's great coach, great coaching, and from Nicky May and the assistant manager Andy Smith, Dean's brother, um, used to play a professional as well. He's really good with us as well. So obviously, it's a good setup. A lock all got a new four G pitch there and all, and there's a gym. At the club, so okay. we've been using that a lot and all. So we've been using that every other week, and it's been good because I've been able to work on my strength as well as my football ability. Yeah, which is good, and obviously it's going to hopefully build me up to become a Premier League player. Hopefully, obviously yeah. that's what I want. And is it's obviously like all's ambition to be back in the Premier League at some point? Yeah, absolutely. U- usually, like all are up there. Hey, yeah. usually top six in the championship most seasons but obviously just missed out this year but yeah of course um, I think for any championship club their, their ambition is to go to the Premier League like yeah but um, m- maybe if uh, in a couple of years time it could happen but you never know yeah. you just have to take each season as they come and keep improving as a team yeah and is there certain steps as a club you know you have to take to get to that level yeah absolutely um, I honestly don't feel we're that far away as maybe just a consistency issue is it yeah it's just a consistency issue sure last year we played against Ard Glenavon as as we got to the semi-final of the Irish Cup and oh yes Harry Kane got an MB Ardo oh, Erickson. Erickson there he is from your football who do you support Manchester United was that just a, a fa- like, I swear Man U too and yeah. usually just like a it's like a family thing more isn't it that, that you just support to yeah. you're, to, you're told to by your parents <laughs> that's it yeah, yeah. <laughs> my, my auntie uh, made me support United so she did and obviously I've loved it ever since yeah. I, I would regularly go over three or four times a season you had, P- you had the PSG game yeah it was at United v PSG home leg unfortunately yeah Unfortunately, it was not though. If you're at the way, like, oh, that would yeah, special. Oh, it would have been amazing. But see, even at the home home leg, the atmosphere was brilliant. Obviously, as Mourinho got the sack, and Ali was in, and yeah. the place was buzzing because he was on beaten, and it was. A, he, ha- he hadn't lost at that point, had he? Yeah, he hadn't lost, and the atmosphere was brilliant going into it, and everyone had belief that we could beat them. Obviously, it didn't go to plan, but yeah. obviously, it did in the away leg, which I'm buzzing about. I'm sure you are too. Yeah. What was it like watching Mbappe in the flesh? Oh, it was unbelievable for his for for his goal. He was that he was so quick. Yeah. So he was, and see, just seeing how fast they move the ball, and it was unbelievable. Yeah. What do you think about Oli getting the job on a full time basis? Yeah, I'm absolutely buzzing about it. I feel like it's the right choice, especially how well he has done since he has come in. Um. I feel like the four men behind him have a lot to... Yeah, one's from Northern Ireland. Yeah, Kieran McKenna. Yeah. He's from Fermanagh, yeah. He's apparently a great coach. And he's doing a lot of things behind the scenes. He's the one that doesn't get as much credit as yeah. the other two because Obviously, because of his playing background and yeah. affiliation with the club. Exactly. Obviously, everyone loves Mike Field from the time of Sir Alex there. And then Michael Carrick's had a yeah. distinguished career as a player there. Definitely. 
But no, I feel like it's the right choice to give him the job. But how could you not? After how well it's, he's done since it's he's unbelievable. Been, his form is unbelievable. Like how far were we behind top four since exactly, Ollie came yeah. in and now look where he is. He could be a winner Madrid in the summer too. <laughs> Madrid are trying to send everyone in the summer. Yeah. Right? Like from an outside view, I've never had like I've never played senior football or anything. But how important is a manager because? It feels like the players should be able to, if the players are good enough, they'll just be able to do whatever and the manager might not have a massive impact, but how big is having a manager that can motivate you and you play for the manager? Yeah, well obviously it's important you have respect towards your manager and that's what we all have towards Dean, as he has he had a great career himself playing the Irish League for Glenavon, etc. And like, obviously it's a how it's the stuff he does on the training pitch as well which we respect him for he's the one that does coaching some coaching sessions as well as Nicky May the coach and obviously everyone buys into it and for us to be successful as a team we have to buy into what the manager thinks and wants yeah and I feel that's the most important thing about having a good team camaraderie like yeah and you played under Gary Hamilton who's one of the the best managers in the Irish League yeah what was it like playing under him it was absolutely brilliant Gary has a lot of faith in his youth he's not afraid to play play his youth if he feels they're good enough um, which is obviously how I got the chance to play for Glenham and I'll I'll ever I'll be ever be grateful for him for giving me my Irish League debut yeah for Glenham and playing for them but it was honestly surreal playing in the Irish League at such a young age, but something that I'll remember for the rest of my life. Yeah. And how important is it for a young player coming through that you know the manager is willing to give youth a chance and he's well, because you, you see the path that others are taking before you, how important is it that you know if you play well enough you're going to be in the team on Saturday? Yeah, obviously it's a, it's a massive thing as a young player coming through the academy, knowing that the senior manager is is going to play the youth the youth the youth team if they're our youth players if they're going to be uh, if the fields are going to be good enough and yeah. obviously through Sykes and another player there Keel Marn who's Reese Marshall Reese Marshall James Singleton who are all thriving this season yeah obviously goes to show that it's worked for him 100% yeah yeah absolutely and, and they have so the silverware to show it too don't they yeah definitely with the Irish Cup wins um, and it just it just goes to show you that it works yeah that if you pay, if you're going to willing to take the risk on a young player and play him week in week out it's it's going to show after time that it paid off and for a guy it has showed that yeah you see some managers who are really reluctant to give Youth a, youth a chance because although Hudson Adoy at Chelsea he's an example he, he's playing really well but Mirtu Sarri still hasn't started them in their Premier League match so I'd say it's really important to have as I scored I can see the third I'd say it's really important to have someone that you know is going to trust you and trust your ability yeah absolutely well I feel Sarri doesn't trust to play Hudson Adoy yeah. in a Premier League match yet as it, he has experience with Pedro, William and Hazard there yeah. so I think he's just going what he knows and what he thinks go with experience Yeah, as they have ex obviously been through it all and obviously played at a higher level for a longer time but I feel he, need, he needs to give Hudson Odoi a chance as you've seen during the week there for England he was he started an England game before he started the Chelsea game in the Premier League which is oh, ridiculous really, yeah. has that even happened before? Uh, I'm not sure. Not sure, but it would be very rare. Often. It'd be yeah, very rare, at least. Absolutely. Um, it just goes to show Southgate, another manager who gave you the chance. Yeah, yeah. gives you the chance and Sancho yeah, and the likes. Exactly. And obviously, since Jim Sancho is another example, like ever since he left uh, Man City to go to Borussia Dortmund, um, he's uh, thrived in a different country, but yeah, it's still a very competitive league and. Obviously, playing regularly in the Bundesliga has earned him a spot in the England side. So yeah, it's Hudson Odoi obviously, obviously could do, go the same route as Sancho did. And yeah, but apparently Chelsea's offered him a new deal. I think. Yeah, he 
Bayern Munich were looking Hudson Adoy, weren't they? Yeah, uh, in the in January. So in January, yeah. But he decided to stay. Yeah. But your two or three games after he didn't go, sure he didn't put him in the squad. Yeah, so bench and stuff again. It's hard to know what to do. Yeah. It's a big risk. Yeah, absolutely. But after seeing what Sancho has done, it's one worth taking, I feel. Yeah. Would, Would you have ever consider going? Because you hear of a lot of people going to America to play and different countries. Would you have ever considered going away to play and try and get that sort of experience? Um, yeah, I would have loved to, but I just never got the time to do it. Obviously, yeah. at a young age, I was still playing the Northern Ireland setups and that happened. So I think whenever I was 18, I had the opportunity to go to America for a scholarship, but which I didn't, I didn't take. Because is that something you regret? It, it, what is it? Is, is that something you regret, not doing? It is something I regret, but at the time, it cost a lot of money to get over. Yeah. Yeah, so obviously... It had it, been a big risk. Yeah, it would have been. But obviously, I would have loved to have done it. I, I, don't, I, don't, I can't say I regret not going. Because how everything's worked out here. Yeah, because I'm enjoying playing football here. But it would have been a great experience playing the hot weather over there. Yeah. It's, it's also, also tough, tough for a young a young person, person to go away to to, to a different country, isn't it? Because I went to England, I, I found it tough at times. Like so, going away to America, it would be a totally different lifestyle and that sort of thing. Yeah, absolutely. Like, even when I was younger, going across to England, the the, the clubs. Uh, yeah, for one or, one or two hours. Yeah, I missed missed home, like, <laughs> missed my mom's cooking and stuff. So it, it's obviously it takes a lot to do it. Four one up. <laughs> <laughs> this has been a disaster. A total, total disaster. Don't bring footballers into the office. <laughs> Teach you how to play. Oh, disaster. I hope because I get in the Champions League, though, to be honest. Yeah, I see him. I don't want City winning everything. No. They're, <laughs> They're so good, they actually might win four trophies. I know, it's ridiculous. Pat Guardiola has. Do you think they win the Premier League? I don't know. I'd, I'd prefer City to win the league yeah. rather than Liverpool because I know just all my friends are Liverpool fans, Liverpool fans and I just yeah. don't want to listen to them, to be honest with you. Yeah. There's not that many City fans about, you see. So, oh, it'll be interesting. It'll be a good good finish anyway. Yeah. But fair play to Liverpool for sticking, goal, there, sticking, yeah. sticking up there with the City like because obviously some people are just saying it's a, one of the greatest Premier League sides ever. Which is probably true. Yeah. Go. Gonna start for bang. No, Ooh. not yet at least. Sterling he's in some form this year. Unreal. Unstoppable. Ah. I think it's between him and Van Dijk for player of the year. I think? Maybe yeah. Guero? Maybe, but I don't think so. I think Sterling's been in yeah. better form. Especially for England as well. It yeah. This has been the season where he's turned into. He's matured a lot, I think. Like an actual goal scoring threat. Yeah. And um, the amount of chances he creates. Yeah. He got a lot, he gets a lot of stick still from people for I don't know what reason, but he's an unbelievable player. Yeah. He deals with all the criticism brilliantly. Yeah. I, I feel like he's a bit underrated. Like I don't feel even still probably yeah yeah I don't feel like they talk about him as much as they should because he has been outstanding this, yeah. the last two seasons his stats have been ridiculous like even during the World Cup I know he didn't have a great World Cup but he has voted like bottom, bottom of the polls and stuff like, what, like what's that about Madness. even in the play like Tunisian stuff like there has been a worse Tunisian player on the pitch than Raheem uh, Sterling no, yeah the press gave him such a hard time yeah that's probably it probably is racial like yeah. Blow it up, Raf. <laughs> Not just yet, Raf. West, Leroy Sane. Crossing the Sterling window. Redemption there. Is he offside? No, he's not. Consolation goal, I think, just. <laughs> Better redemption. Kevin De Bruyne. Two more to get for the draw, Johnny. <laughs> How much time do I have left? I'm hoofing it. Nice. Get in there. <laughs> So there's me, 2-0 down, we'll play one more and see if we can get a win on the board. 
So third and final game, my last chance to get a win on the board. We're doing no rules here, so you can hack each other down whenever you want, and no offsides, etc. There's actually someone on this team that you played against. Yeah, Marcus Rashford played against him in the Milk Cup. Unbelievable. So I can't see what this. It was absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. And could could you tell I, even back then that he was going to be unbelievable? Yeah, you could. Absolutely. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll skip over that. Yeah, so we'll, let's go there. What just um, happened? In the what minute? Second, was it? <laughs> I was convinced the ball wasn't even there. Um, yeah, you could see a mile, mile away that he was going to make it because he, he, he was walking through us. Yeah. And I think BBC on still share the goal that he scored against us. And I think Was it a cracker? Yeah, I think he dribbled past about four of our boys, not making one or two of us, and then just slammed it past the keeper with ease. Did it feel like a man playing boys football? Yeah, absolutely. Like the standard he was treating it up? Yeah, but it didn't even look like he was trying. He, it just, he just made it look so easy. And obviously, supporting Man United, like I was hoping he was going to turn out the way he has. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. Play. How many years after that did he go on and make his debut? One? Yeah, one or two years after. Well, he played in the Europa League when someone got injured, didn't he? Uh, well, wasn't, he, wasn't it his dad? Was it not his uh, dad? Oh, it was in the Europa League, yeah. And then he played he like the week again. after against Arsenal? Yeah, did someone scored, get injured again? And he, he scored had twice? Scored twice, yeah. Remember the game well. It's crazy how like one moment of someone getting injured in that... Because he, would, he wouldn't have played that night probably if... Whoever it was didn't get injured. Yeah, all you need is that wee bit of luck in football. Yeah, you just need one chance, don't you? Yeah. You need an opportunity. Yeah. Well, uh, another reason how I got into the Glen Allen side is because they were racing players for the Irish Cup final. Oh, really? Yeah, that's how... I that's how it is for young people, though, isn't it? Like, in any in any form of life, really, you just need one opportunity and someone to take a chance. Yeah, absolutely. You need a bit of faith in someone just to put them in and then... It can, it can. It can take you anywhere, so exactly, can, yeah. if you take your chance, yeah. And so he's probably the best player you've played against. Who would be the best player you've played with? Um, it would probably be Mark Sykes, who we uh, previously talked about, or Gavin White. Yeah, both at who, Oxford now. Yeah, both at Oxford, who have, are both recently in the Northern Ireland squads. And another player I played against was Jordan Thompson. He was another one I played with. In the well, he played for Man in that team as well. What is it, sir? Would he have played for Man U in that team as well? Uh, yeah, yeah, he was playing in the month with, Rashford, with yeah. Marcus Rashford, yeah. Um, he was on Stockpool as well. <laughs> I was trying to mark him and it was just no Hard chance, pass. yeah. <laughs> but it's great to see them doing well. So yeah. Is. And fo- football isn't the only sport you were really good at when you were younger as well. You were, you were a very, very talented cricketer. Yeah. And you played for like the likes of the NC under 11s and stuff. Uh, do you still enjoy playing cricket now? And is it a bit of a release from football maybe now? Yeah, absolutely. Coming towards the end of the football season, you're getting sort of sick and tired of it. <laughs> and you're looking forward to something new. And I, I'm lucky enough that I have cricket to go into. And yeah. I still absolutely love it. And honestly, oh. I just love uh, all sports, to be honest. See, watching... Sports, whether it's football, cricket, rugby, I'll watch anything, and yeah. that's just the way I've been brought up watching sports. Yeah, and you're them. quite a sporty family, isn't it? Like your, your big brother and stuff? Yeah, my big brother, he plays rugby, and my older brother, he's played a wee bit of football. And obviously, my, my brother Michael, he represented Ulster Academy for a while. And in rugby? Yeah, in rugby. And so. I don't know how because her parents didn't even play any sport. <laughs> <laughs> Was he in the sporting jeans? No. Do you ever think? Cause I think that sometimes about you, like we played cricket together when we were younger too. I think like how good you could have been if you had maybe chosen cricket instead of football. But obviously, football is just your. Uh, <laughs> There's another goal. Your, there. your passion, and you obviously love it. But do you ever think how good you could have been at cricket maybe if you had chosen it? Um, it's not something to think about, no. But obviously, when I was younger, it was it was hard to pick out of the two because obviously the, they were both clashing. As I was, yeah. I was playing, I was training on a Sunday with football and cricket. Yeah. And I just, I just 
turn you have to mom, make a decision yeah I turned around to my mum and said I'm going to have to pick one of these here because I was decent at both of them and was just football you enjoyed more yeah football I enjoyed more and, and more opportunity and maybe too at that time especially yeah more opportunities and I felt that I was better at it so that's why I pursued football it was your best route yeah but don't get me wrong I still absolutely love cricket and I'll, I'll look forward to the summer every year to get playing it again you looking forward to playing for our man this year yeah absolutely it was, it was obviously more exciting last year as we playing got the in, Premier League we got into the Premier League and obviously we didn't we didn't expect, expect it but obviously it was a, it was a great experience great going experience, up in yeah. the Premier League playing against some Ireland stars and obviously it didn't go to plan and <laughs> we're obviously down again but it was it was honestly yeah. a great experience and we loved every minute of it yeah is something you'd like to do again yeah absolutely but in cricket I'll never I'll never leave Armagh because I'm the secret players yeah I'm playing with my mates and that's what I enjoy in cricket and they'll never be taken away from me so I'll just be happy to play for Armagh in no matter what league yeah but hopefully we'll give the league a good go this year again and yeah. you they're, never know they'll be a, back up again next year they're in a good position to give it a definitely a very good go yeah absolutely obviously coming like down like Hollywood and Woodville will be very very strong though yeah you'd imagine so but obviously coming down from the Premier League obviously the experience we gained last year should help us and, yeah and hopefully we'll learn from learn from the experience up there good and bad and take it into this year and hopefully it goes well yeah sometimes that, is, that sort of bad experience can put people off and the last thing they'd want to do is go back to to what happened but it's good to see that Armagh are looking to, to bounce back at the first t- attempt yeah absolutely no we all knew it was going to be a tough task yeah. at the start of the last season and but we all bought into it and we all gave it a, our best shot and obviously it wasn't enough but that's all we could give and that's all that everyone tried their best yeah that's all that we asked for and everyone committed to it and it was it was brilliant to see as a group of mates that everyone tr- tried to pull the strings together and it, w- it was successful the season for us as yeah. as we tested ourselves against the the best players in the country so yeah for sure obviously going back into the section one this year it'll be Better, better, beneficial first. Yeah. Somehow I've magically managed to win a match. So uh, I say thank Andy for coming on to the show, and we'll be back next week with episode three. Thanks very much, Johnny. It's been a pleasure. There we go. See you next week.